Hey there folks, Gnomis here and welcome back to another Universe Sandbox 2 video. So, in this episode we're gonna add some more planets, but this time we're gonna add some more planets closer to the star. This means we're gonna add some hot ones. And there's only gonna be a few of them in that area. So this video is gonna be a bit shorter, I think, than the previous two because... Oh, and by the way... My plan is to also add an asteroid belt beyond the orbit of Edpi, so, so stay tuned for that. Now before we're getting started, let me talk about a few things first. So one, the script for the first episode of Object Interstellar is now complete, so all I need to do is work on the animation and also the voice acting. So, so expect that one to come out really soon, maybe in about a few weeks till a month, possibly. And yeah, and the second thing I want to talk about is that some of you have pointed out that it's actually quite impossible for an A-type star to have a planet with life. Not to mention that this system has three habitable planets. Now here's the thing, firstly, this isn't supposed to be realistic. I'm just doing it for fun and the reason why I chose an A-type star rather than a G-type star because then it would be more interesting and also, by the way, I do think I have found a way to make the star fit into my series without it being too unrealistically. So let's just say that Loop is actually an undiscovered type of star, which is also extremely rare. Because did you actually know there are actually yellow hypergiants in this universe? But those are extremely rare. So let's just say that this type of star is even rarer than yellow hypergiants. The reason why some of you have pointed out that life wouldn't be able to evolve on a planet around an A-type star is because they have a very short lifespan. But here's the thing, that, that this type of star, while producing more energy, is actually able to have a lifespan of about 10 billion years, similar to the sun. How is that possible? But that's the thing, this type of star is undiscovered, so no one knows that. So yeah, like I said, Loop is now an undiscovered, rare type of star. Probably about one in a trillion of these. So yeah, there you go. Okay, but guys, before we're adding any new planets, let's give Nomis some ice caps to make him look better. Nomis just needs a bit of ice at the poles. There you go. Now let's just add some on the South Pole as well. And there we go. Looks a lot better now. Alright, so now we're gonna add some more planets around Loop. Alright, so we're gonna save the game first. Alright, so the first planet we're gonna add is actually our first gas giant. And it's going to be a hot mini Neptune, so I want this planet to be a lot closer to the star. But not too close because I don't want it to be eaten by Lou. Now this is going to be a hot mini Neptune, so let's make it about three times the size of Earth. And this one is going to be called Rexa. And by the way, this is another female. And yeah, she's very close to Lou. However, I don't like the colors on this planet. I want this to be sort of a creamy form of color pattern. So let's see if we can fix that. Yeah, I want this to be kind of similar to Saturn. Yeah, I 
think that's looking pretty good, honestly. quite nice actually but yeah looks like our first planet is already done oh and one more thing guys we need to change the interface color to be sort of a creamy like color and there we go yeah all right i think that works but don't worry guys i'm gonna make some more gas giants that are way more beautiful than this one in the future there are more of them, I promise. However, we're not done with this video yet. I still want to add one more planet between Loop and Natfla. And this time, we're actually gonna add a rocky planet. Now this is gonna be a much smaller one. Now this planet is going to be male. And it's going to be named Neb. Now the thing about Neb is, firstly, this is by far the smallest planet. It's not going to be the smallest one of the entire system, but it's going to be the smallest planet of the inner loop system. So we're going to make this just a tiny bit smaller than Earth. Yeah, I'll go with that. It's still bigger than Mars, so... Now the thing about Neb is, I want this planet to be very similar to Mercury. So we're gonna give this an the elevation of Mercury. Yeah, see, there we go. That looks quite good. Now, I want this to be a very bland, grayish surface, similar to Mercury. However, we can still add a bit of brown. We're gonna change that so it doesn't look too off. And I want this to be a very boring looking world. It's actually going to be extremely similar to Mercury. There's hardly any differences between those two other than the fact that this planet is a lot larger. Okay, let's add just a tiny bit of brown to the surface of the planet. Okay, let's quickly raise up the temperature. Uh, no, not that much. To around 500 degrees. Because Neb is orbiting a hotter star, I guess we could have a bit of lava on the surface of the planet to make it a bit hotter than Mercury. Now, this planet doesn't really have an atmosphere Loop should have burned off the atmosphere of Neb. Another cool feature about Neb. Hold on, let's give it a more a grayish. No, let's say whitish. There we go. So, the thing about Neb is that it's actually being pulled by Rexa. So, its orbit is. Orbit is slightly eccentric, and we can have this planet being a little more inclined. And it's because of Rex's strong gravity, which isn't that far away from Neb. I guess we could make the inclination of Rex a bit more insane like. There you go. So now the two planets for today's episode are done. Oh, one more thing. 
This quickly changed the surface temperature of Brexit to around 2000 degrees. Yeah, unfortunately you can't see the surface of Brexit anymore, but it is what it is. However, we're still not done yet. We still need to add the asteroid belt around Lou. Oh, one more thing guys, we're gonna save this. Alright, let's see how big the asteroid belt is. Okay, it needs to be a lot bigger. Let's say around 5 AU to 8 AU. Nah, that's a bit too much. I just want this to be a very large asteroid belt. Yeah, I think I'll roll with that, so... So yeah, now before I go, let's put these in chart mode. So let's get one last look of our two new planets. So here's Rexa, who, who is female. Gnomis, aka myself, who is male, of course. Then we have Epi, which is also male. And then we have Netfly, which is female as well. And lastly, we've got Neb. So yeah, and of course we've got Nomis' two moons, Kai and Wifold. And don't worry guys, I will go back to adding moons around some of the other planets. However, I can confirm that Rexa doesn't have any moons. Nep might have a tiny little asteroid as a moon. So yeah, that's all for today's video guys. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you all in my next video. So, peace out everyone!